Escape from New York is the Kurt Russell. Call me Snake. Mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world what New York could become if it just got its shit together. It starts off telling us what we already know. New York is a total shit show. But it's also a trailblazer in the world of search and rescue. Speaking of, when they check on the bleeps, the sweeps, and the creeps, <laughs> they get devastating news. Air Force One has a female pilot. Oh, the abreast of this imperialist country. Nobody has a clue what she's babbling about, but they know it can't be important, and she'll probably crash before she gets to the point anyways. Get me to the pot. So the president fucking bails. When they go to pick him up, son of a bitch, he wandered off again. As presidents tend to do, and if they want him back, they have to solve a riddle from Steve Buscemi, who was smack dab in the middle of his Beavis phase. If you're not in the air in 30 seconds, he dies. You touch me, he dies. If you come back in, he dies. But come on, that one's easy. You retreat like a bunch of pussies. Let's go, let's go. Then beg Kurt Russell, call me Snake, to come save your ass. I'm making you an offer. But not as you, as a character from Trailer Park Boys. Something's fucky. And have him wear an eye patch to make things more fair. Fucking obviously. <sighs> but this is Captain Ron you're talking to. He doesn't have time for your petty bullshit. Get a new president. I know that sounds good, but it always seems to make things worse. After some awkward silence while trying to figure out who I'm referring to, he says Fuck it, he's in. So after a very unnecessary briefing, the crazies they live in the subways. Some areas have streetlights. No shit, that's so crazy. He gets a physical for insurance purposes that includes a bunch of shots because New York is fucking gross. Now, they have the difficult task of making Kurt Russell call me Snake. Fly this two-seat glider and make it look awesome instead of awkward and weird. Close enough. After doing a couple laps to make sure nobody sees him flying this, he almost overshoots the landing because the system uses meters and he's a red-blooded American who doesn't know anything about that lame-ass shit. Anyways, as soon as he exits the building, the feminist inside him is overcome with pride at just how far women pilots have come. But no time for that. He's gotta rescue the press. Holy shit, the Velvets. F off, President Bitch. He'll get to you when he gets to you. And take a seat. It's gonna be a while. Afterwards, he's spotted by a fan. What do you want? I thought you were dead. Okay, dick. And you've been dead for like 15 years, so fuck you too. When you're in a global phenomenon, like the computer wore tennis shoes, where getting struck by lightning turned him into a computer, you just have to accept shit like that's gonna happen. Hi, Chief. Nice night. Nice boots. Well, thank you, sir. That's more like, oh, you sneaky son of a bitch. He'll have to keep that eye on you. Now get out of here, you little rascal. I'm looking. Then, he's not sure if that's a drinking fountain or a toilet, but it's New York, so probably both. And after patiently waiting, gets fed up and tells them there's other people that want to use the drinking toilet. So take that shit somewhere else. <coughs> then he tells them, you know that new sound you've been looking for. Well, listen to this. Hail to the G. But those smug assholes aren't ready for that yet. Get back in that glider, I'll shoot you down. 
Fucking dick. So I guess he can look for that one guy now, but the giant Easter egg's empty, so he's out of ideas. He tries wandering around aimlessly when some Michael Jackson sh** starts popping off and he makes the wise decision to get the f out of there. But also the unwise decision to go in here. You a cop? That's an easy mistake, what with the eye patch, no sleeves, long hair, and the fact that there aren't any cops here, you fucking idiot. You're a cop. Oh my god, he's the barefoot executive where he used a chimpanzee to greenlight TV shows. Show some damn respect. I heard you were dead. He's really not in the mood for this, so get eaten by the fucking ground, you annoying bitch. Then he hails down a taxi, but the driver's this guy. I thought you were dead. Who's terrible? Never mind, he's awesome. He's like and he even knows where What's-His-Face is. Now where's the president? Uh, the Duke got him. Oh man, they could have saved so much time if they didn't have that pissing contest over who's dead. But it's not every day you pick up the dog from the Fox and the Hound. In my cap? <laughs> Wait till I tell Eddie. So first, a quick detour to show off to his friends. Heard you were dead. You're thinking of the book, and if you bring up that ending again, he's gonna lose his shit. Then, before he can ask what the torch thing's about, we get this knowledge bomb. Man should remember his past. Fact, if you're remembering the future, there's some shit seriously wrong with you. And what kind of crazy fuck pumps oil in their living room? Swear to God, Snake, I don't know. Well, you better figure it out. Fuck with me. Or your ass is gonna be doing Seagal movies. Hi, Harold. Just one thing right now. Don't call me Harold. How about this? He calls you whatever the fuck he wants, and you fucking deal with it. So now, they're trying to do that one thing, but they're interrupted by this normal Cadillac with the optional chandelier package, because fuck yeah which gets him hyped up and in the New York spirit, so he kills this honest taxpayer and jacks his car. Then they head to the train station where they're all sick of Harold's shit too. That brain is a real pain in the ass. Seriously, a new world conquering scheme every damn night is a bit much. Meanwhile, Russell, Call me Snake. Proves only little bitches Wind about taking an arrow to the knee. Speaking of bitches. Who are you? Only the star of the strongest man in the world, where he gets superhuman strength by eating magic cereal, you stupid jackass. He is so pissed, he doesn't even see the guy standing right there. Sure, he only has one eye, and dude's basically a ninja, but still. Because of that cheating. And outnumbering him 10 to 1. But mostly the cheating, they managed to take him prisoner. Who are you? Pretend you never saw, now you see him, now you don't, where he invented magical juice that turns you invisible all you want, but we know you're full of shit. And he sure as hell saw it. I've heard of you. That's what I thought. <laughs> Fucking dick. The next morning, while these low-budget Ninja Turtles are watching him sleep, he's showing off his Steven Seagal-level firearm skills by hitting precisely where he's aiming and then blowing the smoke off the scope like a total boss. Then cranks the Seagulling up a notch by forcing President Alex Jones to kiss his ass on command. You're a number one. But he's gonna have to wait again because some jabroni made the mistake of challenging Russell for the Intercontinental Championship. But this poor man's Iron Sheik knows he can't win straight up against the star of Search for the Gods about ancient alien astronauts and makes it a spiked bat trash can lid match that ends exactly how you expect.
while he's delivering the most electrifying bludgeoning in sports entertainment. President Jones has had his own transformation and has never felt more right. But he snaps out of it when Harold stabs Steve Buscemi. <laughs> and she lights up whoever the f these guys are <laughs> for no reason. So he rushes back to his shitty little plane, but you wouldn't believe the traffic, and now it's night again. And son of a bitch, they're trying to push the plane off the building as a hilarious prank, and in their defense, it is hilarious, so it's hard to get mad at them. But easy to get mad at them, and I'm pretty sure he shoots one in the ass. Then, it's just one of those nights, and now the car won't start. But before we can figure out why, the rich man Steven Seagal shows up with a steam engine or some shit and is gonna waste all of them. Just say goodbye to each other. Before he inexplicably points to the right for reasons nobody knows to this day. Either way, the steam plug starts spitting, then the dead guy pulls up for reasons that definitely make sense, but there's no time to explain because they're doing exploding bridge slaloms. While Harold gives very helpful advice. Jog right when I tell you. Now! Thanks, dipshit. I said jog right! The f do you mean jog right? They're starting to think that he might be full of shit. Yes, damn it! Damn, I guess we'll never know. Meanwhile, late midlife crisis guy is wheeling and dealing with his highly advanced briefcase telephone. Get over to station 19. Now they're about to make it out of that shithole New York and into that shithole New Jersey when President Jones decides to one-up him in the Seagalling by flinch hip-firing like a goddamn lunatic. <laughs> While he's doing that, the antibiotics are wearing off, so he needs another dose, and he needs it right now. Realizing that trading a Seagal for a Seagal makes the whole world go stupid, he conducts a simple test. A lot of people died, I just wondered how you felt about it. When he answers, he feels like God, he knows what he must do. He was then immediately assassinated and his corpse impeached, which was largely symbolic but also necessary. 